MVC, as with many things in computing, is an acronym that stands for Model View Control and is a pattern used to develop applications. Think of an application as a process for doing something. For example, managing products that appear in a website. The problem with MVC is that it has many interpretations. If you ask 100 developers what MVC is, you will get 100 different answers. But we hope that there will be some common traits to those answers. Those common traits being, first, logic, presentation, and data are separate from one another and then used in conjunction at different stages through the process. The flow of the application being contained in the controller the presentation in the view or views, and the data interactions found in the model. Our use of the MVC will be a strict implementation. This means that first, views will only send requests to controllers, such as index.php. Second, controllers will only use models for database interactions. Third, all database functions will be stored in models and called only from controllers. And fourth, controllers will select the view to be returned to the client browser. This illustration demonstrates our strict implementation. You see that the browser links and or forms only direct their request to the controller. The controller contains control structures such as if, else if, else, or switch statements to determine what is being requested. If the request requires a database interaction, then a function that resides in the model is called and the results of the interaction are returned from the model function to the controller. The controller then determines the appropriate view to return to the browser in order to inform the site visitor of the result of their request. This diagram is key to understanding the working of the MVC pattern. I encourage you to memorize it and understand what each component is responsible for. Now that we have the overview, let's dive in a bit deeper. The controller is primarily a series of control structures used to determine what is being requested from the browser. In order to have access to the functions stored in the model, the model or models, if there's more than one needed, must be in scope. This is done by using the require or require once statement at the top of the controller. It is also helpful if all browser requests are captured and stored into a single uniform variable, such as action, for testing in the control structures. The controller then has the code in place within each control structure to know what to do in order to fulfill the various browser requests. The model or models must have access to the database connection object. This is usually done using a require or require once statement at the top of the model. Each database interaction type is stored within a custom function. Each function must have access to the database connection object. This can be accomplished by using the global whatever the database connection variable name is command. This command allows the database connection object, for example, $DB, to be used within the scope of the function. The scope of the function is limited to the code between the opening and closing curly braces of the function. It is critical to remember that a function must also return the result of its process. This is done by using the return command and specifying what is to be returned. The view is essentially a web page, primarily built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It will need a small amount of PHP. The PHP should be, first, only enough to display the result of the controller's process, and second, 
should not contain any function call directly to a model. This avoidance of calling anything from the model within the view is part of keeping our strict implementation of the MVC. By naming our controller index.php and placing it in the root of the application folder, it keeps URLs short and manageable. For example, if the application were contained in a folder named content and our website were named example.com, to access the application would require a URL of http colon slash slash example.com slash content. The controller would then be accessed and responsible for handling the processes from there. Finally, a suggested organization for a folder-based application. That is, the entire application is stored in a single folder. First, name the controller index.php and store it at the root of the folder. Second, if there is a single model, name it model.php and store it at the root of the folder as well. If you have more than one model, you could create a subfolder named Models and store all models within it. Third, create a folder named Views and store all views within the subfolder. This is because there are typically more than one view, and by placing them all in a subfolder keeps the application folder more organized. Fourth, finally, if you have other support documents, you can create other subfolders as needed for the support documents. For example, CSS files, image files, and the like could all be stored in a subfolder appropriate to them. I hope that this overview of MVC will help you grasp the basic concepts and implementation. In the videos to follow, we will turn this conceptual overview into working code.